Well, thank you very much, Alan, for that uh, fantastic introduction, and uh, thank you guys for having me tonight. It's uh, certainly an honor to be here on the People's Law School. Um, I've probably been watching the People's Law School since I was a little boy, so it's, uh, it's an honor to be here, and I appreciate Alan for uh, inviting me to be here to talk about my novel, The Professor. Um, the Professor is a legal thriller about a law professor at the University of Alabama played football for Coach Bryant on the 1961 National Championship team. Um, it is entirely a fictional story, but there are some cameos by real people in the book. Uh, Coach Bryant makes a cameo, and a couple of the members of the 61 team, uh, Leroy Jordan and uh, the late Billy Neighbors, also make small cameos in the book. Um, the book is a legal thriller, but it's, uh, it's really more than that. It's, it's, it's a story of redemption, and specifically, Tom McMurtry's redemption. Uh, Tom is the main character of the book. He's, he's a law professor at the University of Alabama. The book opens uh, in Tuscaloosa at the Wayside Restaurant. Have any of y'all ever eaten there? Um, it uh, opens with Coach Bryant asking Tom to come back and form a trial program at the University of Alabama and be an evidence professor. And uh, Tom, of course, accepts uh, Coach Bryant's request and uh, comes back to Alabama. He's a young lawyer at the time and comes back to be a professor. The book then flashes forward 40 years and you see Tom again kind of in the twilight of his career. He's a legendary law professor and um, he's got a lot of obstacles in his life that have come upon him. There's a new administration at the school. He's having some health problems and around this same time there's this automobile accident, this horrific accident that claims the life of a young family of one of Tom's oldest friends. Well, Tom's friend comes to see him and asks him for help, and believing his own career is over, Tom refers the case to a young student, a former student, who's just hung up a shingle in Tuscaloosa. His name is Rick Drake, and uh, the book sort of goes back and forth between Rick's investigation of the accident and what's going on with Tom, and Tom essentially retires to his family farm in Hazel Green, Alabama, which is where I grew up, and it's right on the Alabama-Tennessee uh, state line, and... Um, He's kind of a broken man, and, and the story is really about what is Tom going to do? Is he going to quit, or is he going to continue to fight? And uh, that's why the story is so much about redemption. Um, I've had a great time writing the book, promoting the book. We've had some great signings. Uh, we went to Nashville, Tennessee, and had a signing. We had a, a sold-out signing here in Huntsville back in January. We were in Fairhope, Oxford, Mississippi. It's been all over the place the last month. It's been a whole lot of fun, and it's, and it's really fun to be here tonight. I have to continually pinch myself about living this dream because it truly is a dream of mine to do this. Um, I get two questions all the time. How did you come up with the idea for the professor and uh, how did you have time to write it? Um, first question, how did I come up with the idea? I went to Alabama Law School in Tuscaloosa, graduated in 99, had a lot of great professors. Uh, sometimes I daydream in class, as you do sometimes, and one of the daydreams I used to have is and what would happen if one of these great professors, you know, came back and tried a case? You know, could they still do it? Would the classroom cross over to the courtroom? And uh, growing up, Alabama football fan and uh, SEC football so big here, I, uh, you know, in my house, you know, you grow up, about the time you learn how to say hi, you learn how to say roll tide. Um, and that's just the way it was for me. So don't hold it against me, you know, Auburn folks. That's just the way it was. And so um, <laughs> the... Uh, the story has some of that flavor to it. It's certainly not a football book, but there's some football flavor to it with him having played for Coach Bryant. Um, and that kind of adds to his legendary status uh, in the story. Um, the, uh, the other question, I guess, how did I find time to write it? I'm a practicing attorney. I, I work at Lanier Ford Shaver and Payne. I, uh, I would get up in the mornings and write before uh, work started. Uh, I think that's the way Grisham did it, um, and that's certainly the way I've done it. Um, you have to have a really supportive wife to do that, especially when you have three young kids. And uh, when the alarm goes off at 4.30 in the morning and wakes up everybody, um, it's never really a good thing. But uh, Dixie's been really supportive of me and uh, couldn't have done it without her. Um, the, uh, the professor, like I said, is a story of redemption. And if you'll bear with me, I would like to read a, uh, a small segment of the story, which I think really encapsulates who Tom is. It's not a giveaway, so it's not going to ruin the story for you if you haven't read it. But it does happen in the courtroom, and Tom, as I said, has some health problems, and 
they sort of strike him at the worst possible moment of the trial. Um, he's about to examine probably one of the most important witnesses in the case, and he has this crisis of health, and he's trying to figure out whether he can, whether he can continue or whether he's going to have to quit and turn it over to his partner. And a lot of people have come to the trial to support him, um, a legendary law professor coming back and trying this case, and some of his teammates on the 61 team are there. So anyway, um, if you'll bear with me, I'd like to read from page 376 of the professor, picking up in the middle of the page. Miss Bolliard, Tom began, forcing himself to ignore the shooting pain. You can't pull up lame, old man, he told himself, not at the finish line. On September 2nd, 2009, where were you employed, Tom asked, looking at the jury, then to the back of the courtroom where Pal Conrad and Bocephus Haynes stood side by side behind the members of the 1961 team. Pal and Bo had left their seats so that Faith Bolliard's sons could sit down. Tom wiped his forehead and met Bo's eye, then glanced down to Billy Neighbors. Another flare of pain nearly brought Tom to his knees, but he steadied himself by grabbing the council table. The Ultron gasoline plant in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Faith said. Tom nodded and cleared his throat, and another shooting pain sent his hand to his knees. Professor McMurtry, are you all right? Judge Cutler asked. Tom blinked several times, trying to gather himself. His legs shook, and for a minute, he thought he was going to fall. Feeling a hand on his arm, he looked up and saw Rick Drake's blurry face. Professor, do you want me to take over, Rick asked. And the words came out contorted, as if spoken through a piece of paper. Tom almost nodded. He almost said yes. Then, forcing his eyes to move, he again looked to the back of the courtroom. When he saw neighbors, goosebumps broke out on his arm. His old teammate on the defensive line was standing, as were Leroy and the rest of the team. They were all standing, and as if the voice were speaking right to him, Tom heard words from long ago. Men, there's going to come a day in your life when things aren't going too well. Your wife has left you or died, your house has burned down, you've lost your job, and you ain't feeling too good about nothing. When that day comes, what are you going to do? You going to quit? Tom blinked back tears of pain as the words of the man came back to him. It had been summer workouts, 1960. Blistering heat that made you want to throw up, and some did. Gassers followed by push-ups followed by more gassers. Some quit, but not Thomas Jackson McMurtry. Not then. Not now, not ever. Thank you so much for having me tonight. Um, I'm going to have a book signing next week at the Jones Valley location, Barnes & Noble, from 6 to 8 on Thursday, April 10th. And for the folks in Tuscaloosa, I'll be there on the A-Day game, April 19th, from 10 to 1 for a signing right outside the locker room there on the Strip. So thanks so much. It's been an honor to speak to you tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good luck, my friend. Uh -huh. I love it. Thank you.